Um, I'm not very good at the tub thumping speeches uh, like Lois is, but um, I will start off by saying how sad it is to see the cenotaph, the empty tomb, the memorial to the glorious dead cordoned off every weekend in London. One wants to know what the people who gave their lives so that women and children would live on when they didn't would think about the fact that we have to protect our own memorials in this capital city. I think it's a national embarrassment and we should all be ashamed of what is going on in this city. Our country has changed irrevocably since even my childhood, but it is still a country that they fought to protect and it is still our home. And the most important thing you ought to know about your home is that it is your home and we have nowhere else to go. Britain is a warm, welcoming and tolerant nation. We are unforgivably polite. We take in those who are suffering or seeking refuge from foreign conflict. We build a health service that serves lords and the poor in the same way. And we lead the world in driving to be genuinely progressive. We value free speech because we understand that without free speech, there are no other freedoms. But day after day and week after week, our great culture is being eroded. Our confidence is being demoralized. Children are taught to feel guilty for the wrongs of the past. We are ordered to be ashamed and even hate ourselves for being the tolerant nation that we have become. We lead the world in equality and egalitarianism. And yet week after week, those who seek to divide us, like the mayor of this capital city, we are told that our countryside is racist. We are told that our art is darkly colonial, that oppression is rife. Presenters on the BBC that we pay for tell us that they don't feel safe in a room with different colored people. They're just trying to hide the fact that they are the exact thing that they accuse every one of us of, racists. They worship, they hate our own flag, but they will worship every other flag. Look, you've got a Ukraine one up there, you've got a Ukraine one up there, but they hate our own flag and they love, the flag they love the most is the progressive revolution migraine flag. The flag that has nothing to do with this country. It was a flag initially intended with good, with good reason to provide safety for those who love different people, but it's turned into a political symbol that is, lives in hatred of Britain and everything we stand for. And I, I, I mean, if I can get the nomination, Rob told me to get, if you can nominate me for London Mayor, you'll never see a sodding pride flag in this town ever again. But look, there, um, there, there is some, there's some not good news. They're winning. This country is winning. They are winning because they know that we're a good humour people and they exploit our kindness like bullies do in playgrounds with insults and silencing of any hopeful or diverse opinion. And we all know that the only diversity anyone should give a monkeys about, is that racist? Sorry. Uh, anyone who gives a monkeys about is the diversity of thought. It's the only thing that interests anybody. This country is not a squat or a free hotel with benefits for those economic migrants who want to come here and exploit our system. It is not a place where teachers should be hounded out of classrooms for teaching children about blasphemy. It is not a country where Jewish people should have to hide their religious symbols for fear of a mob who shout violence on the streets every weekend while this political police force look idly on. Trust in the police is at an all-time low. And some of our views, or some of their views, are met with indifference, and different views are met with police batons. That has to stop. You police without fear and without favour. Now this is, whether we like it or not, and I like it, our home. Whatever your colour or creed, we are all British first and we have a responsibility to protect the culture that was passed on to us and be part of the covenant to pass on to those who will come after us. There is no, this is more bad news to you, sorry Howard Cox, um, there is no political solution to this problem. There is none. 
There is only a revolution that can take place in every single one of our heads and minds and hearts. A courage to stand up and believe in yourself and face down these bullies who would change this country forever. And we only do this by talking to each other and listening to each other and being confident and coming together in defense of this country. So I will start, I will finish where I started. This is Great Britain. We all have a right to feel safe here. This is our home and we have nowhere else to go. Thank you. Sincere, um, my sincere thoughts and prayers with, um, with Princess Catherine at this terrible time. And um, I hope she gets better. Um, friends, patriots, here we stand, a shining light amongst a sea of darkness with great fortitude and resolve because we strive to claim our country back. Absolutely. We need to claim our country back from the dark forces which are undermining our historic traditions and heritage. <laughs> forces which threaten our very democracy itself. It's time we made Britain great again. Yeah. Far too much has gone wrong with our country in recent decades and the decay is accelerating and visible all around us. This is no longer Britain. This isn't the Britain we love. No. I don't recognize it. Do you recognize it? No. We stand at a crossroads in more ways than one, obviously. A turning point, which if we don't seize it now, may be doomed for generations. So I say to you, our, politi our politicians are weak. Our civil servants are woke. Our educators have betrayed not only you guys, but our children and our future children as well. Yes. And I'm sorry to say this to the boys in blue, but our police are afraid. They're so afraid of the mob that they won't do their job. British people voted for Brexit because they... What? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Two-tier policing. British people voted for Brexit because they love our country and they don't want it to change. For the worse, beyond recognition, but politicians across the board have had their chance and they have failed to deliver. So now we, we need to take back control. Sadiq Khan has destroyed London. Crime is out of control. He literally hates drivers. He really, really does. He hates normal, working, ordinary people. You're not allowed to have white people in adverts anymore. That's come straight from the top. He has morally and financially bankrupted London. London, a great international city, has now become a capital of anti-Semitism. What has he done to our capital city? And the Tories can't escape the blame either. This has all happened under their watch. Every week there is another hate march supported by the great unwashed with their Jew-hating racist banners and their Palestinian flagpoles. Ignorant Marxists and rabid Islamists who seem to think that if it rhymes it must be true. Two, four, six, eight, Israel is a terrorist state, whatever. Well, I've got one for them. One, two, three, four. If you don't like our values, I'll show you the door. Yay! Or maybe this. Heat is and Hamas are terrorist scum, so stick your flagpoles up your yeah. <laughs> Friends, we need to stop this madness now. We need to press the rewind button and put the great back into Great Britain. I'm Lois Perry, and I'm standing to run UKIP. The political party which changed the face of Britain. If you're with me, I'm putting you into UKIP. The fight of our lives is now. It really is. We're at war. Let's make Britain great again. Shout it with me. Let's make Britain great again. Let's make Britain great again. Thank you very much. Thank you. I come from a Muslim background myself. I'm not a Muslim anymore. Because I know too much about Islam. I know too much. And I don't talk about, you know, 
Muslims as a whole. Of course, I'm not talking about every Muslim, but Islam as an ideology is deeply dangerous and problematic. And in order to see that, you have to just go and read the Quran, read the Hadiths, and look at the life of Muhammad. And when I see the people in the streets shouting Sharia for UK, that really worries me. Because in the Middle East, one of the reasons that the societies in the Middle East are held back is because of Islam. And countries such as Dubai, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, they've come to this realization that if they want to come to the 21st century, they cannot be living by barbaric rules. So as I was saying is that the problem is even Islamic countries have come to this realization. But then we have people in the streets that preach hate, they preach all kinds of nonsense. And this is a threat to British democracy. And, and you know, this idea that you cannot speak about anything anymore without being called Islamophobic or homophobic or xenophobic or racist. And that's how they stop uh, freedom of speech. And as my friend was saying here is that once you tolerate everything, you stand for nothing. Okay? In a free society, in a, democ in a democratic society, we have to have freedom of speech. Okay? We're not Islamophobic for questioning Islam. We're not homophobic for questioning the gender madness of LGBTQ. Okay? We, we're not, you know, sexist if we talk about some parts of, you know, t feminism and toxic feminism. So, I'm a free speech advocate. I hope everyone stands up and speak up because obviously I'm just one individual and what I'm trying to do is to inspire people especially with the background that I have you know there's a not a lot of people from my background that would come and speak about Islam the way I do and like a lot of people say to me you should be worried you should be scared and this is a problem you know you can make fun of Christianity you can make fun of Judaism but if you speak about Islam then all of a sudden it's no more thing for you to get deference why is that a normal thing in society? You know? That should never be normalized, ever. Thank you. And finally, I just wanted to say that, you know, uh, thank you for having me. And I'm just basically, oh, sorry, one more thing I wanted to say about Sadiq Khan. And, you know, again. <laughs> so. You know, Sadiq Khan, every, every time something bad happens, he always hides behind Islamophobia and racism. And I think that's just absolutely ridiculous. He's the worst mayor that London has ever had. And every time you criticize him, he's like, oh, you're Islamophobic. And he, you know, pandas, he was a lawyer that was uh, supporting people that were terrorists be before in his career. He turns a blind eye to Islamification. And dangerous rhetoric that has been said in the mosques because sometimes I go to those mosques and he doesn't do anything about it and if you do question it he says oh you're Islamophobic no I'm not I'm Persian I grew up in a Muslim household my granddad memorized the whole of the Quran and I love my granddad he was a great guy however the people the moderate Muslims that we talk of they're the ones that cherry pick the Quran. If you actually truly believe in the word of Islam, there's a reason why all the terrorist groups in the world, ISIS, Boko Haram, Taliban, the way they are is because they actually follow the word. And that, that is a problem for the West. We need to stop this because this has happened throughout history that you know Muslims have a responsibility to Islamize the whole world. It actually says it in the Quran. And we in the West, not just in the UK, in the US or Europe, we have to speak up about this. Okay? We're not Islamophobic for standing for the truth. Thank you. Welcome. For those who don't know me, you can find me on social media, trying to annoy as many people as possible. Me too! I love it! <laughs> but mostly Islamists and communists, actually, so... It's a, it's a good job, I think so. Right? But today I don't, I don't really well. want to talk so about Islam though. today, you know, I, I want to actually give a message of hope to everyone. I want to tell people that our enemies are actually not strong. It's actually we who have grown weaker. Yeah. 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 And what is the we that I talk about? We, the English, the Welsh, the Scots, the Northern Irish, all the people from overseas territories and British loyalists like myself 
who have come over here to live in the motherland. God bless you, sir. You're both well. That is the we that I talk about. And that is the we that has grown weaker. Because if you're honest about it, we are the ones who have left our churches empty. Yeah, we have left our families. We have broken our families. We're not teaching our kids what it is about to be British. These are the things that we have done to ourselves. Now you might say, well, where is the message of hope? <laughs> well, this is it. If we have done it to ourselves, that means we can change it. Yes. We have the power to change it. Yes. And those are the things Christians that we have to do it from within everybody. ourselves. We have to become the reflection that we want to no, see in others. We have to uphold the British values, culture, traditions that are tied to the heritage of these lands. We have to be better brothers and brother sisters, better fathers and brother mothers. This is us. It's up to us. And if we unite together, if we come together, then our enemies don't stand a chance. Well, that's, that's fair. That's fair enough. There's a lot of things that has happened to us, right? That we didn't vote for, we didn't ask for. We voted for Brexit, its potential was never realized. We, we didn't vote for mass immigration, we, we voted to stop the boats. That never happened. But there's things that we can all do ourselves first. The things that are in our immediate vicinity, the things that are within us. Once we start changing that, then we start changing the things that are in our culture. And I'll end with this. We must not seize our mental fight. Not let our sword sleep till we have built Jerusalem again in these pleasant lands. Thank you.